please welcome a veteran of three space flights, including the fifth and final mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope, NASA astronaut Andrew J. Voistel. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I want to uh, give a quick shout out to Andrea Mitchell on her Lifetime Achievement Award. And uh, I just want to say, I hope I'm never standing on the wrong side of the fence facing you in the future. But uh, thank you all for the warm welcome. And uh, thank you for your support of human spaceflight and space exploration. We're close to celebrating 20 years of continuous human presence aboard the International Space Station. Every day on orbit, we're working to support our Artemis program and exploration farther into the solar system. We invite you all to watch us conduct science and technology development uh, and demonstration that's only possible in microgravity. That's today in space travel. Let's turn the clock back 50 years and look at how TV covered the historic Apollo 11 mission. Five, four, The race three, to the moon and the two, impact of network one, news traveled in parallel zero, paths in the 1960s. We have a liftoff, 32 minutes. For both, the peak was July of 1969, when Apollo 11 roared from the Kennedy Space Center. The three major broadcast networks pulled out all the stops. Walter Cronkite anchored for CBS with astronaut Wally Schirra as his expert, Frank Reynolds and Jules Bergman for ABC. For NBC, it was Huntley and Brinkley with David at the Cape. And to say that somebody is about to land on the moon and walk around on it, while almost everybody on Earth watches, is just about too much to swallow. I almost don't even believe it. And Chet in New York with Frank McGee. The networks tried to outdo each other in production, staging, and technology. NBC converted Studio 8H, the studio we know today as the setting for Saturday Night Live, into their space center with an Apollo capsule, globes of the Earth and Moon, and a map of the Pacific for the splashdown. ABC used new technology. We're going to use uh, our telestrator, this amazing electronic device, to show them how they were, what actually happened in the landing process. And even had Duke Ellington perform an original work, Moon Maiden. Now I'm just a fly-by-night guy, but for you I might be quite the right do right guy. But it was the reaction from Cronkite when the Eagle landed that might be the most memorable. Man on the moon. Thank you. You're looking good here. Oh, boy. Boy. <laughs> We're going to be busy for a minute. Wally, say something. I'm speechless. The man whom America depended on to give them their news left without words. In that way, he might have been like the rest of the millions viewing humbled by the achievement and awed by the technical advancements and production effort that allowed all to share in the historic moment. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We've come a long way from those days, I hope. Uh, NASA astronauts Christina Co Cook, Drew Morgan, and Nick Haig are working and living uh, with a multinational crew aboard the International Space Station. Tomorrow, our colleague Jessica Meir will join them, and her launch will uh, be televised live on NASA TV, so I hope everybody will watch. I'm now going to turn things over to my colleague Christina, coming to us from the International Space Station. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. I'm NASA astronaut Christina Cook. We are working every day to prepare humans to achieve the ambitious goal of landing the first woman and the next man on the moon, establishing a sustainable presence there and empowering humans to travel onto Mars. Just as we've done since the days of Apollo, we'll continue to bring you along with us to experience the wonders of space. You can follow along from not only your television, but from any mobile device and on social media as we achieve humanity's goals of lunar exploration through the Artemis mission. Not only does the International Space Station provide insight to lead us back to the moon, it is also a unique orbiting laboratory where we conduct research that advances science and medicine for the benefit of everyone back on Earth.